that turned out to be a big deal simply because so many people saw that and he and his band are so prominent in the music world. Yeah, and there, on Mars. Yeah. There's a whole, um, one, it's about a minute long, uh, a scene between me, one other actor, and Bruno Mars and his band. It's, it's funny and it's, it's a good piece. And it was a prominent thing. Now, I had no idea it was him when I was hired to do it. But I just went along with it. It, it wasn't painful. It was just a couple of hours of shooting, actually, because they were very well organized. Mm -hmm. another, another time, I followed an ad on Craigslist, and it turned out to be a very good role in a very good small series. It was made for cable, but it was made for the Red Bull network that's Red Bull the energy drink mm -hmm. and Jizza one of the singers in Wu-Tang Clan was teaching science to kids and I was part of the company that illustrated the various scientific principles and experiments so it was just from following up something on Craigslist that I had that job yeah. there are other other conventional ways to find work, of course, and most people know it, Actors Access and Backstage. Yeah. I, I had an agent for a while, um, and she got me a couple of things, but um, I was still getting most of my work myself, and she closed her office <laughs> without telling me, <laughs> um, and so I no longer have an agent. Yeah. Yeah, there are always opportunities for acting projects and uh, projects in entertainment, and you have to be willing to take many opportunities as you can. And another interesting sort of sideline, but it, it turns out to be kind of kind of significant. I did some print work, and someone said, "Well, you should go to." the site called Model Mayhem. So I did, and I've been listed on that. And I've done quite a bit of print work. If you look, um, well, there were a lot of, there's a certain amount of stock photography out there. And I've worked with photographers who then put the photos with those stock agencies. And I never know where I'm going to turn up. I've been used uh, for advertising purposes, and even one company took bought a photo of me from the stockhouse for their memorial cards. And I thought it was very funny. Um, there was a, a card with a photo of me, and it said "In loving memory," and they made up a name for me. I thought this was very funny, so I put it on Facebook, and I immediately got a response: "Oh my God, we didn't know he died." <laughs> so, so I learned not not to do that. But um, I've, I've been on a college catalog cover, and then quite a few ads, which is which is sort of nice. I, I don't I don't get anything from that use. The photographer does; he gets the licensing fees. But it's just fun to to know that you've appeared in these odd places. Someone, someone without authorization or payment, used a photo of me in a, an ad for a product that makes your hair grow. <laughs> and for the, they had two photos before and after. And they, for the after, they photoshopped hair on my bald spot. <laughs> it's, that, that, you can only you can only laugh about something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Some things like that you can only laugh at, and it turns out sometimes it could be pretty funny. <laughs> My next question to you is, what is your advice to people uh, who want to be an actor and who want to get a career in the entertainment world? What is your advice to them? My advice is to explore as many possibilities 
possibilities as you can. Even if something seems outrageous, there's a very popular show in New York called Sleep No More. It's based on Shakespeare's Macbeth, but it's sort of deconstructed, and they have six floors of an old warehouse where various scenes from the play take place, and the audience wanders around from scene to scene. And for one summer season, I was involved with that production. They had a few of us as characters interacting with people on the roof of the building where there was a restaurant and tavern. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, they were looking for someone my age, so I applied, and I got the job. <laughs> it even involved dancing, which I have never done and cannot do, but they gave me a few interesting steps to perform with the woman playing my wife. And um, we would perform a couple of times, but the rest of the time we stayed in character and interacted with the people who were at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of fun and, and very challenging. And it, I, I developed some imp improvising skills by doing it. Now, I never would have said ahead of time, gee, I want to pretend to be somebody in a play related to the story of Macbeth, and I want to do it with, <laughs> with dancing <laughs> and interacting with the audience. But I did it, and you know, I got to know people, and I, I had that experience. That, I think, is the most important thing. Don't limit yourself. And whatever comes along, just do it. And when I started out, I, I often would do things for no pay, whatever. Now I at least want to cover my expenses and hopefully you know, earn some money. But it's the work you do that will then lead to other things. I work with a very very prominent improv group simply because I had they were casting a play and they needed they saw there was a character in the play called Grandpa and none of them knew anybody old enough to play it but one of one of them said hey I, I did camera work on a video and there was this guy in it and it was me so they called me and I then did a play with this group for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So it, you just want to be out there, find all kinds of opportunities. And um, it's just the nature of the business. Even in a busy market like New York City, a lot of people know one another. I've frequently been on a set and someone on the crew or the director, or the um, or the other actors will say, oh, I remember you, we did that other thing together. There's a, a constant uh, crossing and networking that goes on. So, and besides that, as you've done things, especially in film and TV and video, you have footage that you then can use in getting other jobs. So this, this one. Um, it's totally unpredictable, and and that's part of the fun, also. Yeah. Yeah, you have to get your work out there, and it's a team, you know. You can't just do it alone. It, you have to have good connections, and it's a fun business to be in. It's rewarding, and if you enjoy it. Uh, don't give up, and the business is not for everyone, you know, if you, you have to have the passion for it, and... But you also have to realize that if you don't get a job, it's it's not personal. Yeah. I've, I've, by being on the other side, I've seen cases where they were only looking for actors who were above 5'10". They never said that. I knew it because the director had told me he needed to tall actors because he had already cast a few tall people. So anyone who wasn't 
significantly tall was just wasting their time and would not get cast. I saw a, a very uh, I saw a very prominent commercial being cast and totally inappropriate people were called in even though there was no chance at all that they would be cast because the production team knew the kind of person they were looking for. So you could be, you could in your mind be perfect for a role, but for some totally extrinsic reason, you could never be cast. Yeah. And, and so rejection is tough to deal with, but you really do need to have a thick skin. I don't think overly sensitive people, um, will have an easy time of it unless, unless others are specifically protecting them because they're so good. But for most ordinary people, you just have to have a thick skin, um, put up with rejection for those times that things work out. And you also have to have good, a good set of expectations. You, you can't say, I'm I'm in acting so I can become a big star and have a huge car and an entourage to take care of me and make lots of money. Um, it's good if something like that happens. But if that's your expectation, you can be really hurt and, and unhappy with the results that, that develop. Yeah. Um, something about compensation I want to mention. I did a job uh, for an insurance company. They needed photos of people who looked like real people for their website, illustrating their various products. So I did that. It was a couple of hours, and it was, it was okay. What then happened was, at the end of the year, I got an email. Do you mind if we use it again, and we'll pay you this amount of money, and this amount of money for doing it? <laughs> Absolutely nothing was terrific. And this has happened three times. So even though it was just one small job, the, the financial benefits have been great. Um, you never know. I mean, I've, I've done tremendously hard work for, as I said, for very little money. And I've done you know, things that were super easy and gotten well paid for them. Yeah. So the whole thing is nuts. Um, and again, that can't be your expectation. I, I'm not sure I know anyone who's been in the business uh, because they're, they're, they expect to get rich. Really, they don't admit that that's why they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, you can't just be in it for the money. I think the average pay of people in Actors' Equity and also in the Screen Actors Guild if you average it out, it's very, very low. Yeah. Because you won't, most people, and a lot of people, you don't become a sensation overnight. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes hard work and a long time. Yes. Um, and, you know, it. What's, 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 on the other hand, what's good is that there's, there's room for a lot of people. Um, you, you could be, you could be, a, you know, really a beautiful person in, in the physical sense, a great face and a good body, and sometimes that's what's needed for a particular purpose. But then, uh, on the other hand, there are the case, the times when they want someone who is actually funny looking or ordinary looking or um, in, in one case I got a job where the listing had been for a gnarled man G-N-A-R-L-E-D mm -hmm. gnarled man and I read the description and I said I'm not sure this is me but why don't I apply for it anyway and I got that job what they meant was just that he had some character in his face and, you know, I fit the, their description, and it was, a, it was a good job. So you, you have to be imaginative about it.